everyone welcome back to the channel today I'm going to show you how easy it is to start a book with Quarto so the book format is similar to the way that a website appears but uh, it is a bit more organized there are more features like a table of contents and some things that you would expect to find in a book so in this example we'll take a look at the default that appears and we'll modify it slightly um, so as far as ideas on how you could use this type of a product, certainly you could use it just to write a book, uh, but for educators in particular, this would be a wonderful format if you wanted to publish, say, a lesson plan, or if you wanted to write a bit more of a complete product for your students to learn about a particular topic. So you could organize this into chapters, whatever that would be for you. It could be an introduction to the topic, maybe some material to work on, and then uh, a series of questions that need to be answered, something like that. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, for this video, I'm, I'm in our studio again, and uh, I'm going to be loading a new project, which is always a good idea. And then in that project, we're going to create a Quarto document in the book format. So that's already canned in a, in a preset uh, template that you can load in. So to do that, uh, we'll just go over here to file and then new project and then I'll just start new directory here and then from this list if you'll take a look we have new project our package shiny application which is like an interactive then we have quarto project website blog and book so we'll choose quarto book and go ahead and get started so uh, my current directory here is just in a temp folder on the C drive here so I'll just call this um, book example and then leave everything else as is. So this will create my Quarto book project inside of this temp folder. So we can go ahead and create a new project, a few things run, and then we'll see that pop up. So initially what we, uh, what we have is this index.qmd file, which you would have seen if you made a Quarto website. Uh, it looks very similar. And then we also have this YML file, which is uh, where some of the settings are, are kept. So uh, just to look at this momentarily, at the top we see the project type is book, and then there are some settings for the book. One is the title, then we have the author, the date, and then chapters. So we already have four chapters provided to us in this uh, template. Index is the main one, and then we have intro, summary, and references. And index is the file over here, the, which contains the preface at this point. Below that we have some settings for a bibliography. So one really great thing about this system and with LaTeX if you use it, uh, is you have a separate references file. And so what you can do in this references document is contain all of your uh, your references, put all your all your items in there in a particular structured format and then you only have to write that one time. And then throughout your book or whatever other document, you can reference those. So it's really handy and you don't have to worry about typing the author's name and date or getting it wrong in multiple places. So you can really focus on nailing that reference one time and then using it wherever you want in your book. Below we see format is HTML. So currently this will kick out the book to an HTML format. There is a bootstrap theme called Cosmo, which is the default here. That can be changed to one of the other preset themes. And then uh, there's a setting for PDF using a particular document class called SCRREPRT, which is SCR report. So we'll just leave that alone. Um, and then the editor is set to visual right now, but you can change that when you look at it. So um, that's what's in the YML file settings. And then in the file list, we have our project file, the, the YML file we just looked at. There's a cover image. Uh, we have index, intro, references, and summary QMD files, as well as the references.bib file. So I want to look at that really quickly because that one is something that I haven't covered before. So 
in this file, <clears throat> we only have one reference. And this is structured as the at symbol and then article, which is indicative of a journal article. And then we have a reference. Now, this one is just a reference to the author's name and the year. So it could be like Smith 23 for an article produced in 2023 by the author last name Smith, or it could be whatever you want. But often you'll have multiple years and multiple publications by the same author. It's nice if you make this relatively short and informative. Below, we have author title year, issue date, and, and many other settings here. But the thing here is that you can create this one time. And just notice that it's a variable equals and then the value inside of these curly brackets. Uh, and then there's a comma after each one. So this reads kind of like a function if you're a programmer. So the first argument is the reference that you'll use in the document. So when you're writing, you'll use this word. And then the others are just the settings. So um, what's great, like I said, this will automatically be published into the references list without you having to format it. So if you're trying to do APA or MLA or any other kind of style, uh, the system will take care of that for you using these data in this list. So uh, for other references, there are different formats. You could have, I think, at book, there, there's a lot of different types. Um, so that's something that can be covered elsewhere or you can look that up. But essentially this bib file will contain as many references as you need. And then you can use these keywords to, to use them throughout your document. So we'll close that now. Um, I haven't done anything with this right now. So the first thing I'd like to do is just show you that, again, we have a visual editor if you'd like to use that. I like to use the source because I can see it. Uh, so just looking at this briefly, we have a uh, hashtag, a single one here. That's a, a large header, the largest style of header in Markdown. And then the title is preface. And then if we hop over to the visual, we can see what that looks like. Um, this is unnumbered at this point. If you would like to have your, your sections numbered, you can do that. And then we have some text, uh, then we have a link and then we have some R code, which is just sprinkled in here just to show you that it can be done. So like other Quarto systems, this is, this is a great place to combine text, code, graphics, what have you. And then, uh, it will all be rendered out together. So without touching anything in the default, we can go ahead and uh, let's turn on render on save and then go ahead and pull that up. So we'll see a few things happening down here. And then the, uh, the, the final product is here. This is what it looks like. I have a few other tabs open that I'll, I'll be using momentarily, but this is the, the rendered output. We see uh, the file title. We have author published date. Then we have our large table of contents over here. So we have the intro, the summary, and references sections, which I'm not looking at now. And then if you look over on the right, we have uh, the content of this particular page. So like a local table of content. So if you have 12 sections in this, you'll see them appear over here. Uh, also at the bottom, we have a, a navigation button, which can take us to the next section. So we can use that. And then on the next page, you'll see that you can go back as well. So all of this functionality is built in, which is nice. Um, and here we see a reference to the author. And as you mouse over that, you even get a pop-up of the reference with a link that works. So uh, again, it's, it's a really nice setup and you don't have to do a lot of work to, to get this look. The, uh, the R code is rendered out here. And if you watch my other videos, you can see how to manage that and either fold it or change the visibility of the code. Um, but here, let's go ahead and move on to summary, see what's in there. Somewhat as a joke, this book has no content whatsoever and more R code. And then the references list. So importantly, let's take a look here and we see that the author um, appears here in the references list in a nice way. It's formatted and uh, even has a link to the DOI. And just in case you're wondering, this guy's like really famous in computing. So interesting story. Look that up. Uh, but that's the book example. That's how easy it is to do this. Now, uh, I was thinking that maybe we could modify this book to make it more interesting. So 
I want to take a look here and do a little bit of content. So if we were to take this and change a few things, what would that look like? So we could go ahead and delete out the preface information. Just replace that with preface text for now. Uh, let's see, that was the index. So let's open up the intro as well. Let's make this a little smaller so we can see a few things. So let's get rid of this and say, uh, what, what if we wanted a block quote? So uh, let's see, we could do a block quote here. And I had, I had that other page open. So we're gonna look here and grab that. So I thought this quote was kind of cool. This is a quote about GIS, which is a technology used for uh, geography and mapping. And so what we can do is paste that in here and then do something like that to introduce our book that will look cool. And then uh, we want to have some text here. I'll just say uh, intro text for now. All right, so that's our intro. Our references, we can leave that as is for now. Might do a, a separate video on references, but let's just look and see what that looks like. So the references source itself is a little different. Uh, so here you just have the title, which you could change. Uh, and then this is a section which is automatically filled. So I'm gonna leave that alone and let that get auto-populated later. And then in the summary, we could just change that to uh, summary text. And this could be, you know, multiple paragraphs. If you wanted to, you could have different sections in here. So you could do something like this just to get yourself set up for later. And that would be where you come back and fill it in, maybe with images or whatnot. And so with all of that done, uh, we can maybe come back here. I know that one of the themes is Darkly. There's a, there's a few others. You can look up bootstrap themes for Quarto. That could be another cool video. Uh, but for now, we can try this. We'll change the name. And then that is today's date. So let's go ahead and get that fixed up. All right, so we don't have any new chapters. If I wanted to include a new section, I just need to make a new QMD file, which you can do here, new file, uh, Quarto document, and then that would get included here. So we can make a new file, include this, and then we'll save this one as, mm -mm -mm, save as, include this and then we see now that I have include this.qmd in my file list. So if we look at the source, I don't really need the title on this page. So I'm just going to say uh, the new title is included section and then text just for something to put there. So we can save that, save the YML, we'll save the summary references. That's all the same intro changed slightly and then the index is a little different and we already have render on save. So when I click this, it will render everything again. And we should be able to take a look at the result. So reloading our page, this is the book example again, but the style has completely changed due to that darkly uh, template that we're using for the bootstrap theme. And so the links are a little different with green and gray and black. So um, here we see that our changes are in effect. They, they were implemented. We have a block quote. We have some intro text. We have our summary, which has changed. These are numbered. So if you remember on the preface, it was unnumbered. This is just your default look here. So if you don't want these, you could include that unnumbered part. And then again, the references list uh, is back here. Now it didn't, it didn't uh, get used. There's nothing in here because I deleted the reference to that author. So even though it was included in that uh, document originally, I'm not using that reference anywhere. So it went away. 
So what we can do is take a look at that bib and grab that name. And then in our summary, let's change that a little bit. According to that reference is an at and then the, the word. Geography is cool. So according to that author, Nuth, well, we'll say geography is cool. All right. And we save that. And then we'll go back and re-render out the, uh, the index to make everything go together. <clears throat> and then let's take a look at our example again. So just to make sure it's reloaded. And then our book is updated and our references list now contains that author. So you need to actually use your reference if you want it to appear in your reference list. All right, so that takes care of how to get a book started uh, with Quarto. So when you're, when you're doing this, just focus on the content, focus on what you want, and focus less on how things look, and you're well on your way. All right, thanks again, and if you like this video, please uh, give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel for more content. Thanks, have a great week.